Hello all, welcome to Vistudent Blog. In this series of VMware vSphere 8 Fast Track uh, course, uh, this is session three. And uh, today's topics covered uh, like configuring configuring DV switch, then adding the SXI boxes to DV switch, uh, like migrating port groups to DV switch. Then we look at uh, how to upload ISO to a data store. Then uh, <coughs> we'll try to build a virtual machine then uh, we'll see how to install vm tools uh, then uh, we'll look at uh, how to create a vm snapshots and how to restore a vm snapshot and then uh, how to add a additional disk then uh, delete a disk how to restore unregister a virtual machine then uh, how to vmotion a vm uh, from one esxi box to another esxi then also we look at uh, uh, storage vmotion of a uh, virtual machine or a virtual disk uh, to a different data store so these are the topics we'll be looking at today so we'll go to our lab directly so this is our uh, before this of uh, requirements so we have a domain controller that is uh, vsb.com and uh, ip is 192.168.86.5 uh, we have two ESXi boxes, ESXi 01 and 02, IPs are 86.7 and 86.8. We do have a vCenter, that is 86.6. Uh, regarding uh, uh, downloading the ISOs for uh, ESXi and vCenter, which we already done, so we don't require this. And uh, for uh, building in a virtual machine uh, of uh, Windows 2022, we need an ISO, which we need to download it from uh, Microsoft site. So apart from this we need an IP for a new virtual machine that we will look later. Okay, so let's go back to our vCenter. This is a vCenter uh, and this is the URL. Uh, vCenter slash UI is a URL we need to uh, browse and we can see the um, uh, shortcuts here. One is for inventory, monitoring and plugins and one is for administration. So this is for uh, accessing the hosts and clusters. Uh, so this is for accessing the virtual machines and templates. This is to access the data stores, virtual disks, all stuff. And this is for networking where you can access the standard switch, uh, DB switch, port groups, all. Content libraries are like uh, uh, like accessing the ISOs where uh, we can mount and uh, learn which have the ISOs. Uh, these two not that much important so uh, we will look into it later and tasks whatever the task running we can you look in the console and events whatever the events uh, uh, we can see, look at it here uh, virtual machine customization uh, we will uh, we will have a look in our next video so VM storage policies host profiles and lifecycle manager these are all uh, uh, we will see in upcoming videos. Uh, we already done this before, but uh, we will try to cover in one single video, which we are missing like templates, deploying a, creating a template and uh, deploying a VM using the template and uh, using the customization. Every time when you build a VM, we need to as an IP, uh, DNS, adding it to domain, and then uh, if you need to install any third party like uh, antivirus or any monitoring tools, we need to do it manually using the customization we can do it once you select the customization and uh, and using a template if you select the customization it will take care of everything so that we already shown in our previous videos but uh, in next videos i will show uh, whatever missing like uh, whatever pending like licensing all stuff we'll we'll have we'll do one more video but for now we'll try to uh, uh, like just uh, stick with our uh, topics which we are going to cover so first one is to create the DV switch so DV switch uh, so if you see here uh, like uh, if you go to networking you can see that uh, standard switch here from here or even if you go to ESXA box and go to configuration and uh, virtual switches you can see V switch 0 is the is the standard switch so you can see the networking like we can add networking manager uh, physical adapters you can see here uh, we have assigned uh, 
VM NIC 3 to this uh, for uh, using it for our vMotion port group, uh, VM kernel port group and VM network port group. So we are using the VM NIC 3 uh, one. Uh, so and here same thing for ESXi2, we are using VM NIC 3. So we have four NICs. If you go to manage, uh, manage <laughs> physical adapter, you can see that uh, VM NIC 0, 1, 2 are free here. And uh, VM NIC 3 is active, which is used by our standard switch for these port groups. So coming to DV switch, uh, so what is the difference between um, uh, V switch, V standard switch and uh, uh, DV switch is uh, so called uh, VSS and uh, VA, VDV. So standard switch is like uh, comes, uh, it comes default with uh, uh, with uh, uh, like a standard edition, uh, like uh, it's like it will be like you need to create it manually on each of the ESXi box and uh, <coughs> and you need, whenever you create a port group or do any changes you need to do it manually on each of the ESXi box so we have only one and two but if you go to production environment uh, you will have thousands of servers physical servers ESXi boxes in that scenario creating port group on each of the box is like a hell so, so we so it will be really painful so uh, you need to do uh, using some scripts or uh, or lot of uh, manpower is required so but uh, uh, to avoid that we can go for tv switch that is distributed switch but uh, drawback is you need to pay for it so it comes with enterprise edition or enterprise plus edition so it won't come with standard edition so when you go for enterprise edition, uh, you'll get a DB switch available there. So advantage is uh, uh, you'll have uh, a centralized management for that. So once you configure the DB switch, uh, if you create a port group, it will be created in all ESXA boxes. And if you want to do any changes, if you apply the one change, it will apply to all ESXA boxes and no need to do, do it on each of the boxes. So a lot of benefits are there which we already discussed in our previous videos so our this is a fast track so i'm not going in depth so how to create it so we need to go to the data center and uh, you need to do it here or else you can go to uh, this network and uh, right click same we are going to the data center and uh, we'll be going to the distributed switch and uh, we have two options one is to create new one is to import uh, distributed switch uh, uh, so if you if you have a configuration file if you click it and uh, select the configuration file uh, DV switch is available for us uh, we don't have that so we'll be clicking on new distributed switch so here uh, name and location you need to give some name I will give uh, DS01 and uh, click next so here uh, it will ask you to select the version select the distributed switch version which you can go for uh, depends on the ESXA version available here so I have 8.0.0 so here if you see the features per version if you click this it will show you the features and enhance enhancements available uh, in the uh, each of the version so we so we are going with 8.0 so here uh, you have a couple of options uh, like network offload so it will have a two two uh, two like uh, two options one is uh, pensado and one is nvidia so if you click on it you will give more option more uh, information about it so number of up uplinks default four and uh, you can also increase or decrease it so we are okay with the uh, defaults uh, network io enable disable you can do it here and uh, while creating itself we can create a new default port group uh, like I will give it some production production 01 so uh, later you can give, create n number of port groups but for now I am creating just a production 01 and click next and um, uh, here is the summary and uh, next suggest suggested action is create new port group and uh, uh, add and manage uh, host which we will do it uh, in the next step so when you click on it you are able to see the new distributor switch with uh, uh, 
this is a, a DB uplink uh, default one and this is the port group which we have created. So as I said, if you click on it and you can see like a new distributed port group and uh, you can manage it and uh, import. Uh, if you have a configuration file with uh, like tons of port groups, simply you can con import it and uh, it will create for you. So I will create a sample uh, like dev01 and uh, one more is uh, like here uh, we are discussing about this uh, port group binding is static uh, and uh, port allocation is elastic if you make it fixed uh, what happens is it will give 128 ports and uh, whenever uh, this 128 is uh, occupied you need to expand it most of the time in production you need to go for elastic and uh, resource uh, pool uh, default uh, we will leave it for it uh, default now and VLAN type is VLAN and uh, you need to give the VLAN number here and just click finish so this is dev and uh, create one more that is uh, just QA01 so this is just for fun I'm creating we are not going to use it anymore uh, static will give fixed for this uh, and this is a uh, VLAN will give two so we are not going to use them but uh, just to show you guys I'm creating them so we have created three port groups and then go to actions and uh, add and manage uh, hosts we need to add the host so we need to select the host uh, so if these are compatible that is the reason you are able to see the green tick if it is incompatible you will be able to see a warning or even um, an uh, error so click next then uh, you need to select the uh, assign the uplink so i'm just using up uplink 2 and uplink 3 so nick uh, vm nick 3 is already assigned and uh, so we'll leave it like that later we'll uh, we will uh, uh, we will once the port, uh, like dv switch is created everything is migrated we will uh, re we will delete the standard switch and uh, we'll release that port group and uh, we'll release that uh, uplink and we'll assign it to assign it here so uh, we have a uh, vm kernel 0 we'll assign it so production and uh, for this also we'll assign production and click next so here uh, this is the uh, network adapter one on the standard switch so we'll assign it to production itself and click next everything looks fine let's see if any errors if you see we'll fix it yeah it's in progress okay so you can see the ESXA boxes and you can see the uh, VM uh, like our vCenter VC01 is also migrated so previously it was on uh, if you go here go to actions <laughs> I would have shown you before but uh, previous it was uh, VM VM network it's on VM network which is standard switch now it is migrated to production which is uh, which is our uh, distributed switch port group and uh, it is accessible that is the reason still we are able to access our uh, vCenter so we don't have any downtime also it happened on the way uh, without any interruption so um, it's a good sign that uh, we are able to create the distributed switch and we have migrated uh, the uh, like uh, kernel port groups all port groups to the yes, uh, to the distributed switch and also the vm uh, port groups so whatever that uh, like uh, it was on a standard switch and now it is it is migrated to production our production port group so if it is uh, uh, real time uh, then uh, we can use some scripts and make it more more faster and easier uh, but um, if, for example you have 10000 vms doing this pattern it will it, it will be time consumption and it's not a best practice so we have some scripts uh, using that we can do that and uh, pretty quickly you can complete them so we are done with our distributed switch then um, though i didn't mentioned here after this uh, how to remove the standard switch we didn't mention it but we will do it now so here uh, we'll go to our 
ESXA box and if you see here uh, we are able to see all three NICs are assigned and uh, uplink 4 uh, don't have any NIC okay so here when you see here there is no there is no VM or any any kernel port group or any pro goods port groups available here so there is no logic in remove uh, like keeping it here so we need to go to manage physical adapters and uh, just move it up okay unclaimed adapter or un even unused <coughs> and click ok that's fine we don't have anything here so it will be released soon so even you can remove directly from here and if you go to this one So it's gone here so standard switch is gone here and here also it's gone so you can see here like uh, in the locks you can see that uh, uh, task you can see that uh, virtual switch is removed now it's completely gone and we are completely on a distributed switch that is dso1 so this snake uh, we need to assign it so we'll just go here manage adapter and uh, here we'll give uplink 4 so let's see you can see that now another nick is added same thing if you go here so you can do it directly on, uh, on the dv switch but uh, anyhow we have only two so we'll do it here itself So now it's added we can see it here so so now this dv switch is configured in full fledged way and uh, so uplink so as i said uh, uh, like if you do it here then uh, automatically it will be applied in all the production boxes like esxa boxes i done it on uh, each of the ESXA, ESXA box but um, if you want to do it on one place where it will apply to all is this one where if you if you add the uplink 4 here and click ok it will apply to all ESXA boxes in the environment so uh, so we done with uh, our step 1 step 2 step 3 so and even uh, there is a step 4 that uh, how to remove that uh, standard switch so that is done then uh, next is how to upload iso so this is pretty simple uh, so go to the data store and uh, uh, select any uh, like data store which you want to upload for example this is the data store this is a data store so go to the files and just you need to click on uh, upload file so uh, like for example th there is a iso you need to select uh, for example this is the iso then you need to select the iso and click open what happens is uh, it will start uploading the ISO to, to build a ISO I uh, to build a virtual machine I already uploaded uh, uh, 2022 um, ISO uh, which is a uh, Windows 2022 so you can do in this way or if you want to uh, like uh, if you if you are accessing your vCenter from uh, from your uh, uh, what do you call from any any gem box uh, like any server then you can do in a different way that is uh, uh, like uh, you need to upload the file um, to need to copy that file to your uh, uh, to the gem box and from there you can upload it there is another way so uh, like we'll we we'll proceed with this for now so build a new virtual machine install vm tools this will will look at it now so for this uh, we can uh, click here and uh, uh, create a new virtual machine from here you can do or from here you can do or even you can do it from uh, uh, sorry from uh, from a virtual uh, we can create a virtual machine from here itself new virtual machine you can create a new virtual machine from here also and uh, from here also you can do it like from anywhere 
you can do it so uh, let's try to do it on cluster okay so new virtual machine so it will ask uh, to what is that you want to do you deploy a template or clone existing virtual machine or clone a vm to template convert a template to virtual machine clone template to template these are all options so template is nothing but uh, uh, you will install uh, everything like you install drivers you install uh, uh, like uh, uh, dns DH, uh, like uh, uh, nick dns uh, you can add a nick uh, primary dns secondary dns but you should not give an ip uh, so yeah, you, if you have any tools uh, which uh, are not uh, mac unique or sid unique then you can install them uh, everything and uh, uh, then you can convert it as a template and you can deploy uh, instead of every time uh, selecting the iso iso and uh, uh, default uh, you need uh, like uh, all scrap like uh, it will take almost uh, if it is a new virtual machine building a new virtual machine using an iso it will take uh, 20 to 30 minutes uh, uh, based on the memory and cpu uh, so instead of that if you create a template it will just deploy a template in uh, one or two minutes so that is the reason we use templates in production so anything one time first time you are using it will create a new virtual machine so let's go with the new virtual machine and uh, create the new virtual machine with uh, I will give something like a VM2022 so here it is a data store data center and where here if you have any like for example okay let me do one thing so here I can create a folder with the name Mm, where is that? VM folder with the name production. Okay. One is production. So all production VMs will go here. One is uh, development. And one is a uh, uh, QA. Okay, so these are three different environments I have. So when you go here, you can be able to see here. So development, production, QA. So production are the production boxes, QA, and uh, uh, these are like test and development boxes will go here. So you can create a folder, and uh, you can move that. Uh, for example, I can move this to production. So there won't be any impact if you go to the production and click on VMs, you'll be able to see the production server here. So that is the reason to segregate the uh, environment uh, servers, to segregate the uh, uh, like production into production, like QA into QA, like you can create these folders and you can move the servers to that. When you move it, the, there won't be any impact. There is no no like downtime anything ping like uh, uh, no outage nothing simply you can select this one and uh, right click and move it to whatever the folder you want you can do it there is no impact so I uh, just want to show that I will be going back again and new virtual machine create a new virtual machine and will give uh, VM two zero two two and here when you click on this you will be able to see uh, like what environment you want to go for it i will go for production so this is the this is the uh, what do you call the cluster and this is the exi boxes you can go for specific uh, you can if you select the cluster what happens is it will select the vm uh, esxi box which is having more resources like more cpu and memory available uh, so if you select if you know that uh, this is having more CPU and MR, you can select it uh, manually or if you select the cluster it will take care of putting the VM on the uh, right ESXA box if it is having any compatibility issues you will be seeing here uh, like there is a compatibility issue or something like that so we are good here so this is the uh, story data store so it will ask which data store you want to put it on so, so we have uh, uh, like two data stores like one is uh, ESXi01 and ESXi02 and this is a, a cluster, data store cluster. If you select this one, it will take care of uh, 
like uh, like wherever the space is available it will uh, just like uh, our uh, uh, what do you call uh, 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 it will take care of uh, um, uh, like uh, putting the uh, vm disks in uh, uh, wherever the space is available it will put it there so or uh, uh, like it will uh, like it will push the disk in a dip like for example this is having only uh, for example 40 gb and this is having uh, uh, like uh, 60 gb and you are provisioning a vm of uh, uh, for example 90 gb so it won't it won't sit on this because it don't have uh, much space so in that scenario it will it will keep the disks in a different data stores and uh, whenever the space is available it will uh, like storage my storage v motion the disks so that is the reason uh, this is called storage cluster uh, and uh, for now like uh, i will put the uh, uh, what do you call i will put this vm on this which is having 65 gb okay and click next and uh, compatibility if for example uh, you have a mixture of uh, uh, ESXA boxes like uh, you have a 7.0, you have a somewhat 6.7 in your environment. You need to go for the least which is having. For example, my environment is having least is 6.7 update 2, and I have an uh, topmost uh, version is 8. If I keep it on 8, if I select the 8, uh, then what happens is uh, that PM will uh, run on own the version uh, only on the version 8 ESXA boxes. So whenever any resource crunch happens, it won't go to the uh, version uh, ESXA box, which is on 6.7. So best uh, recommended is uh, whatever the lowest version of ESXA available on your in the in your environment, you have to select that. Then what happens is uh, based on the compatibility, it will it will move to ESXA 8 VM, uh, ES, ESXA 8 box. If it is having high uh, uh, resource availability, then it will move it to 6.7 ESXA box. So however, environment is having only ESXi 8, so I will select 8 and uh, if you click this one, it will give some information. So just click on next, uh, then what uh, guest OS, if you are building any Linux or Windows you, or any other version, any other flavor, then you need to select others or else you can select Windows and I will select 2022. So enable Windows virtualization uh, base security, we don't really need it. So compatibility is uh, ESXi 8.0, VM version is 20. It will work on this only. If you have lesser version, it won't work. Just click next and if you see here, there is no space, okay. I will make it uh, uh, for now, it's a just test. I will make it 30 and see. Uh, now we have space, then it's accepted. And uh, memory CPU is also okay and here, network uh, you need to select a production you whatever like if it is a production you will select production if it is a dev you will select dev so the iso you need to select here so we'll go to data store which we have on uh, esx site okay uh, here so we need to select this one and click okay and make sure when you expand it it should be selected or else what happens is a uh, VM will reboot but uh, it is not connected so uh, it keep on rebooting and uh, uh, it won't select the it won't reboot with the uh, ISO so yeah so LSI is okay so uh, talking about the KSI controllers we have uh, LSI uh, so and uh, VM para virtual so bus logic LSI and para virtual so para virtual uh, is uh, high speed uh, uh, SCSI controller um, but it is not recommended to use this for uh, for uh, operating system drive that is C drive if it is a, a Linux box yes you can go for uh, VMware para virtual disk uh, SCSI controller but uh, for Windows uh, uh, C drive means operating system drive we need to use the LSI logic SAS and uh, non, uh, non OS drives that is D drive E drive any other drives Yes, we can uh, select the para virtual, uh, uh, para virtual uh, SCSI controller. Uh, like just example, I'm adding another disk, uh, which is of size uh, one GB. 
and here I can add the uh, SCSI controller, additional SCSI controller with the uh, VMware para virtual and for this disk I need to select the SCSI controller is a new, new SCSI controller that is para virtual. Whenever I click OK, what happens is uh, it will it will be the name will change and uh, it will be like para virtual uh, uh, SCSI disk 2 uh, like SCSI controller 2. So uh, anything is uh, this is okay this is okay network is uh, production let me check one more thing so here adapter is uh, should be VMX net 3 okay for older version uh, like Windows 2000 2003 we used to use this E1000E but uh, uh, like uh, now it is VMX net 3 is the latest one which supports 2022 2019 uh, starting from 20 uh, 2012 even uh, it supports 2003 but um, uh, like in production we'll go for vmx net 3 so we are good here so let's go and click next so this is the ready to complete like uh, uh, the details about what all we are doing anything you you find something wrong you can go back and you can fix it click finish so you are able to see the vm here and uh, when you click on power on it will power on so if you you have two options one is uh, launch web console so here timeout okay as i said so we need to restart it see so when you click enter uh, press enter it will start loading files if you miss it then you need to restart uh, the vm again then it will boot with uh, it will try to boot based on the boot order in the bios uh, uh, it will it will it will search like uh, local hard disk network everything and then it will go to the cd ram if you set the cd ram as first boot then it will directly say, uh, check for the uh, bootable CD or bootable files. So you need to click. These are all you already aware of it. So I will just pass the video once this is done. Uh, then we'll proceed with the VM tools installation all stuff. So it's in progress. Meanwhile, we'll look at. Uh, so so we are talking about the storage cluster. This is the storage cluster. Uh, if you go to the storage. Uh, we have a uh, two data store that is data store one and uh, data store two. So if you click this one and uh, go to data stores, you'll be able to see the two data stores of size uh, each uh, uh, 100 GB. So what we done in our previous video is we created a storage cluster so that whenever uh, uh, like uh, we can add uh, in the, see if you see here each data store is of 100 GB and when you create a storage cl cluster it, it, it will make a uh, uh, like 100 plus 100 as total it will show as 200 gb uh, like uh, some files are configured at uh, like system files so it's it's showing as 197.5 available space okay so if it is uh, if you look at the individual it will show it as uh, 90 gb so that's how we configure and when you migrate to this one what happens is uh, it will uh, it will split the disks of the VM and it will it will make sure that uh, it is uh, 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 split and uh, assigned to the net, uh, available space based on the available space. So now it's uh, VM is in progress. So let's wait and see. Okay, so VM is uh, like OS. Uh, uh, building OS is completed VM is ready now so when you go here and uh, look at the VM settings like a uh, VM uh, summary you are able to see that VM tools is not installed so if it is a one VM uh, so what we can do is just go to the actions uh, click on uh, guest OS and uh, click on install VM tools so actually what this VM tools will do is like uh, it will install the uh, uh, video drivers it will install the keyboard mouse uh, like it will install uh, memory ballooning drivers a couple of uh, 
pop tools it will install which will make uh, like uh, um, for example uh, uh, memory utilization so it what happens is uh, it will share the memory of the uh, like of the ESX box with uh, the where when you install the VM tools um, the memory will be shared with the, all the virtual machines and uh, it will be like using the resource in a shared manner so that um, you won't see any memory crunch so that is the reason we install uh, memory uh, like uh, VMA tools uh, if you want to know more about VMA tools uh, just uh, go to VMA site and uh, look for it because uh, you may ask some questions on VMA tools in the interview so in my previous videos I explained but uh, yeah this is a fast track I'm not going to go in detail so just click on uh, VM tools and it will ask to mount it just click on mount when you go here and uh, if you go and uh, uh, like explore for uh, you can see here it will be mounted as T drive and uh, you can just uh, run uh, right click and run or uh, even even you can go to uh, or you will click on setup as 64 and just run as so if you if you or click on uh, just right click and run it will detect uh, whether it is a 32 bit or 64 bit it will detect and it, it will run on its own so so whenever uh, vmware tools uh, latest versions are released uh, you have to upgrade the VMware tools on all of the uh, virtual machines. So, if it is a production uh, going to each of the uh, each of the virtual machine and doing installing uh, next next finish is like a lot of uh, taking a lot of time. So, to ever like the best practices is uh, using the Power CLI scripts. Uh, uh, you, what you can do is. Uh, you can install uh, on all servers uh, like if you have a thousand servers uh, using the script uh, you can install on all thousand servers without rebooting the servers uh, like see if it is it's asking for reboot here so once you click finish it will ask for reboot uh, so uh, if it is a production uh, we must reboot the servers but maybe you have a downtime on saturday or sunday you can install without reboot and uh, you can uh, schedule a reboot on uh, on the given downtime so for uh, day one QA boxes uh, you can do it uh, on the fly using the scripts you can do it uh, uh, but uh, one or two missions you can do manually but production uh, it won't work like that you need to click yes and uh, it will get rebooted once rebooted you will be see the will be able to see the difference uh, so without installing VM tools um, the keyboard or mouse uh, when you try to move the mouse uh, you will see some latency uh, sync uh, like it won't sync if you click some other place it will click on some other place so if you install vm tools uh, will it, it, it's, you feel uh, uh, like very much uh, faster so now vm tools is installed so if you see here uh, that uh, whatever we are seeing vm tools version is now uh, this is the current version so even if you don't have vm tools installed uh, when you go to actions power uh, so uh, you cannot restart or uh, uh, this option doesn't work uh, it will say that the vm tools is not available uh, if you have that you can have a soft uh, shutdown or soft reboot from here itself so when you click this uh, it will send a command to the os operating system uh, to reboot uh, like uh, shutdown command or reboot command from here itself so now it is installed um, everything looks fine so our part is only to show VMA tool so we are not going to rename com the computer name or we are not going to add it to the domain so we'll just uh, uh, showing the VMware tools installation so this is done it's current now so we'll go to our uh, checklist so now it is creating snapshot and restoring staff snapshot so what is this snapshot snapshot is like uh, uh, taking a snap uh, state of uh, a vm like when you take a snapshot at the time of uh, taking a snapshot whatever is the state of the vm it will be uh, it will be snapped and uh, when you restore it for example 
you are installing some application like uh, you have uh, some uh, uh, some some application version one and you want to upgrade it so if you do an upgrade without snapshot and if upgrade fails uh, you cannot roll it back to the previous version so uh, this is something not a backup but uh, just uh, uh, it's some sort of uh, a uh, like a, uh, what do you call uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, a, a time of uh, like a particular time like a snap at the time and uh, like it will help you to restore uh, like uh, something like that uh, uh, so when you take a snapshot and upgrade it and if upgrade fails you can restore it back to the previous state so uh, as per VMware recommendation snapshot should be kept only for three days if it is more than three days you won't get support and even uh, if you keep it uh, for days uh, the performance of the VM will go down so performance will will be like uh, uh, you will see the performance problems all stuff and uh, you won't get any support from VMware so better to delete the snapshot within a week or better to delete uh, after three days uh, not to keep the snapshot more than three days so let's go back to our uh, this vCenter so how to take the snapshot so let me uh, create some files here to show you for example uh, uh, I'm creating some file okay just to show you guys so uh, I have created this and uh, let's go to so to, to take the snapshot go to actions snapshots and take snapshot so here you can see take snapshot manage snapshot reverse snapshot consolidate and delete all this so uh, like if you have a uh, okay so man, if you if you if you took two to three snapshots and if you want to manage it like you want to go to snapshot three and restore it or two and restore it using this manage snapshot if you click this you will be able to see the multiple snapshots here okay and uh, from here you can revert back or uh, delete delete all whatever you want to do from here itself even you can take the snapshot from here so you can take the snapshot from here and even from here okay so i will take the snapshot from here as uh, i will just name it as one for now so you need to give the name and always uh, don't give spaces in the snapshot because uh, for example uh, you are going to patch your production boxes so here you have thousand servers and you need to take the snapshot uh, using the script so we can take uh, all server snapshots okay single script i will uh, take the snapshots of uh, all thousand servers and when you want to delete that uh, you obviously using the script you can do it so when you give space what happens is uh, it will take uh, uh, separate uh, like it will take it as some special character and uh, it will give some ampersand something like that so better to uh, avoid spaces when you like you can do it like that uh, uh, like underscore or dash you can give it but uh, don't give spaces same thing in description you can mention what what is the purpose of snapshot you are taking so here include virtual machines uh, memory means uh, so here when you select this the VM snapshot size will increase if you don't select this what happens is it will don't it won't take uh, uh, the uh, like current state of memory like pretty simple to say is like uh, if you want select the virtual machine memory when you restore the snapshot the VM will be in power off state and uh, you need to power it on so I will do one thing so I will I will create the VM uh, snapshot with uh, with memory and without memory so we'll do one thing to show the difference okay so snapshot will be created it's in progress so it's created and I will create one more here just for uh, okay and this time 
I will do a snapshot. I will take from here, okay? Without memory, okay? To without. This time I'm not selecting the memory and create. If you see here, creation of snapshot is also super fast. Last time it took some time, but this time it's pretty simple, uh, very quick. Okay. So now we have two snapshots. Uh, this is one and this is two. So you are here means you are on this one. So, uh, so I want to show it, uh, uh, restoring it to two before doing one because I want to show you the difference. So now I'm going to revert it to two. Okay. Snapshot two without memory. I will just do it. You can see here VM is on revert. So two is restored now from two and you are able to see VM is powered off. Okay. VM is powered off. So now I will restore it from one. Okay. Now VM is on. Just refresh it. VM is on and the second file doesn't exist because that is on. Uh, that is uh, uh, th when we, we, we took the second snapshot, right? So we'll do two again. Then it will be powered off. You can see it here. VM is powered off and we need to power it on manually. Okay. So I believe you guys understand what I'm saying. So when you select the memory, uh, the VM size will be more, uh, sorry, the snapshot size will be more. If you see here, size is 31 GB. And if you see here, it's just 25 MB. So now VM is up and uh, let's see, log into it. You'll be able to see the two folders there. You can see the folder two and this also. So you have two folders and uh, yeah, this you will be able to see this just cancel it. So this is about the snapshots and uh, next is create snapshot, restore snapshot. I already shown you and uh, uh, with along with that, I also shown uh, uh, with uh, with memory and without memory so adding a disk to VM okay let me show you something which help you okay so now I need to add a additional disk okay so when you go to action and click edit I I don't have an option to add a disk okay so I for example uh, sorry I don't have an option uh, like the existing disks are uh, like uh, they are uh, if you if you try to expand the disk uh, uh, it's 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 not allowing me like it's degraded so I cannot expand these these uh, uh, these two and uh, these also degraded because I didn't enable hot add-on okay so if you have a snapshot uh, just remember this one it will be an interview question if you have a snapshot on VM, you cannot expand the drives, existing drives. If you want to add a new drive, yes, we can do. So yeah, let's let's try that one also. Add a new disk and just say one GB. So here, what you can see is you can add a new disk, but you cannot expand the existing disk that's what it's so just keep in mind so most of the time if you if you are attending interview these questions will come like if why i'm unable to add the i am unable to add space to so you can see the disk here so i'm unable to add a disk uh, what could be i am uh, sorry i'm unable to add disk space to the existing disk what is the reason so you may see uh, you can tell them that uh, possibilities are uh, if it is having a snapshot then we cannot add uh, we cannot add space to the existing disk uh, so but if we ask if they ask uh, can we add a new disk if with a snapshot means yes this is the proof you can see it here so to 
to add space to the existing disk what you need to do is uh, you need to delete the disk uh, you need to delete the uh, snapshots so just uh, you, if you want to delete one snapshot then you can select this one and delete it so just like select this one and delete it if you want to delete all snapshots just click on delete all it will take care of deleting all snapshot uh, it will take uh, you know, some time more but uh, all delete snapshots will be deleted once it's deleted you go to the actions edit settings now we can add space to the previous disk 1.1 I will make it 1.5 okay so click ok it's now allowing me to add the space and just just refresh it here see I can add a 500 MB here now just right click extend next next finish now I can able to add space here okay so so this is done so we are uh, adding space deleting uh, vmdk okay now let me show you something so now i i want to delete this uh, disk 3 okay so you will be having two uh, two options okay uh, let me show you so here when you click on this uh, i will uh, will show you the difference so when you click on this you are able to see remove disk and one more is remove uh, device and data also so what happens is uh, when you click on remove device what happens is uh, it will just remove the disk from here whereas uh, the disk will be available on the data store so let let me do that first uh, let me delete device and data both if you click on this what happens is uh, the disk will be deleted completely once you click ok the disk is gone if you see here uh, there is no F drive okay so now let me show you this one the next one is uh, this one okay let me copy the path also to make it uh, clear for you guys if you want to uh, like uh, just remove the disk from here okay you are removing the disk from uh, VM but you are not deleting it okay so this is remove disk a device or a disk actually so when you click the first option it will only remove the like unmount the disk from the VM but the, the, the disk will be VMDK will be available in the particular location here so let let me show you that also I, I will click remove device now it's it's gone from here click OK and here also it's gone you are able to see that uh, e drive gone but uh, suddenly uh, somebody asked oh man uh, I want the disk back is this available means if you go to the data store uh, this data store and uh, go to the files just VM uh, go to the VM folder which it is and here you can see that we we just uh, one second you just copy the path right so it's vm 2022 underscore one okay so this is the disk so this disk still available okay uh, so what is that means if you want to delete it just select this one and uh, delete if you delete it it's completely gone so that's how it is so here deleting disk from here okay so how to add the disk back to that vm that we will do it now go to the same uh, settings and here add device and go to existing uh, hard disk and here you need to go to this one where VM exists receding and you need to go to uh, that folder and this is the disk we we removed from the VM we need to select the disk and click OK uh, you are able to see that here 1.5 and just click OK and when you go back here it's available sometimes it will be offline you need to make it online clicking from here okay but here it's online means the disk came back okay so that's how we need to uh, revert the back disk if you remove it instead of dealing it from the deleting it from the VM we can uh, add it back next is uh, unregister VM unregister okay so for example uh, this VM I will turn it off for now. 
just uh, I'm doing it. Uh, if it is uh, you want to make a VM s a turn off safely, then you need to go to shutdown VM, guest VM, and it will send a command to the VM to shut down, and it will gracefully shut down the VM. Okay. So now this VM is going down. Once it is down, uh, this uh, green play arrow mark will pop up like it's enabled. You are able to see it. It's it's down now. Go to actions. So here. What we are doing is we are unregistering, removing. For example, uh, you want to just remove the server from the inventory, remove from here. So you'll go to the this one, to go to settings and go to remove from the inventory, click this one. Means you are just removing the server from the vCenter. But when you go to the data store, it, it is still there. Okay. So you want to add it back means re-register so this is what i'm saying unregister re-register so uh, what we done is uh, like remove from the inventory it is somehow so it is also called uh, remove from vcenter inventory okay and i want to get want to bring it back so somebody told that i want that server back so what we can do is uh, go to vmx select this one and uh, click on uh, go to the v concerned data store uh, the relevant folder and uh, this is the vmx file we need which we need to register okay click on register vm so it will ask which uh, cluster which uh, file which folder all stuff even vm name everything so you need to select that okay click finish then that vm will be added back it's again added back and you can power it on so this is a uh, about uh, topic uh, like 12 11 and 12 now V motion uh, let's see if I'm, I can do it uh, uh, let me make it power it off because uh, my VM like my it's running high on um, resources so you can do it uh, like you can do it uh, even if it is a powered on state but I uh, will do it in power off state because uh, it's uh, it don't have a proper resources so that is the reason so let me turn it off if it is a production then obviously you can do it uh, you know, like uh, with a uh, power on state so that is called hot migration and cold migration hot migration is called uh, uh, the when VM is migrated in power on power on state that is called hot migration and uh, Cold migration is like uh, when VM is in power off state and you are migrating to different uh, different uh, ESXA box, then it is a hot migration. So this VM is on now. Uh, uh, it's on ESXi2. Okay, where I can see that. Mm. Here it is. So it's on ESXi2. I am going to move it to ESXi1. Go to actions, click on migrate. Then uh, here you have a couple of options. You want to change compute resource only means you are going to migrate the VM, like VM from one host to another host or even from one cluster to another cluster. So if you want to migrate a uh, hot migration, you can do from uh, hot migration means when it is in power, of, power on state, you can migrate from one host to another host if you want to migrate to from one cluster to another cluster then uh, it should be in power of power of state but if it is migrating between the hosts then it it is okay to power it on and you can migrate it so this is a, a like a vm migration which we are doing so change storage only means uh, vm will be on the same esxi box but uh, in the back end storage like data store it will be moving from one data store to another data store so if you want to do the both like you want to move it from one data store to another data data store along with uh, from one vm to one esxi to another esxi you will be selecting the uh, third option and the cross vcenter means if you have uh, multiple vcenters then you can use this one so we'll be going with first one now so it will list the Compatible ESXi. Okay, it's not listing here. Okay, so let me check. 
underscore by it is not showing so we'll do one thing first it's on uh, esxi uh, data store that is the reason it's not uh, showing the uh, like esxi one so we'll do the storage v motion first storage v motion is uh, just we will be migrating let me make it uh, so we'll migrate okay mm. from uh, e this is actually uh, esxi local disk so that is the reason so we'll migrate it so thin provision is like a uh, uh, I already explained it so I uh, just check my videos uh, so let's try to store the motion to the storage cluster uh, it's it's just applying now so why it is uh, uh, not showing the second ESXA box is uh, I believe uh, the VM is on uh, uh, ESXI O2 local disk uh, local storage that is the reason uh, once it is migrated let's see if we are able to see the second ESXA box so it will take some time just uh, uh, pass I will pass the video and I will get back to you okay uh, so now the VM uh, like disks are migrated from uh, local data store of the ESXA box to the to the shared data store okay so if you see here you can see it's it's on data store 2 and uh, it, it's it, like uh, here you can see here so it's on data store 2 on uh, which is a part of our uh, uh, storage cluster so even if we check here okay uh, so here it is uh, this is the one uh, so so our VM is here but I, I don't know why it is showing let me check what files are there okay ISO is mounted that is the reason it's showing that so let's unmount it so once you click this one that will be going away okay so now uh, let's try one more time to migrate the uh, compute resource that is a uh, VM migration now we are able to see both ESXi servers we it's on ESXi O2 now we are going to migrate to ESXi O1 so yeah so everything is same finish let's see how it goes if you see here uh, it's already migrated so it's on ESXi one if we go to the ESXi O1 we'll be able to see the VM here so VM is here uh, so I am doing it uh, power off because I don't have much resources and it will take uh, more time than uh, usual that is the reason I am doing it on power on power off state but in production we can do it uh, in power on state and it won't take much time uh, seconds it will just take seconds to migrate the VM based on the size of the VM so uh, storage vm or storage vmotion also i showed it before i uh, migrating the virtual machine uh, so we also done the storage vmotion we covered all the topics uh, i hope uh, this is very much informative for you guys and anything we missed it i will try to complete it in our next video uh, i hope uh, this is informative for you guys uh, for any queries or suggestions you always welcome to reach out to me on uh, student blog at the rate gmail.com and uh, please do subscribe like my videos your likes will make me to encourage me to take um, to pull some time and uh, do more videos technical videos uh, to make the people uh, learn the things thank you very much uh, bye bye